Yeah, my good man, I can put it out. I mean, I mean, I really have nothing to hide. Yeah, after me tell the man let me out, the man now let me out, Elvis. And so me open the lock, so the man I lock the lock. Elvis, me no know what, I just jump. And so I finally open the lock to a, a level where I could not jump and I see the people them. I just jump. I just jump, I say, it's either me go dead when I jump, but I'm not dead in here. None of them knock me and rape me. None of them are going to rape, rape me and then they want to kill me. So I better jump out and break my neck or something. But I not go so. You know what hurtful thing? Yes, you know, after, after my day, I kind of catch back my breath now and you know, I kind of get back normal because I write, I write at Hillcrest Avenue, me jump out and I write in front. Think look like I'm, I want school over there. Just after my jump out this time, everybody come because they build up one place this to like one big building I build. They probably want an apartment building and uh, something and the people them come, some security and some other little people they follow when I want teacher girl they come cross to me. And uh, something and she did did um throw the park side by my hand and my foot and whatever cause them did have bleed out and something and she cleaned them up for me. Right? Yo, put this out in the group here. Yeah? Because there are some people in jail that don't for brother. Because this is my one of my female friends that I know well in the scheme. Yeah. And she take in drive and uh, this will happen to her. You understand? So you look at either feel like she's she not in a sense. When you take up the girl, the man cancel the the the, the operation, see? And feel like she's a girl not in a sense. So this is where we reached yes um Friday. You understand? So yeah man, just put it out there, Errol Bailey from Plainland. Yeah man, I want everybody to know what do. You understand? So, I don't know if I kidnap or rape the girl, but this is what the girl has to do. Yes. Errol Bailey, you're in a trouble. Yeah man, you're in a trouble. JY family, the girl has to just chuck out of the car. You hear what she has said, you hear everything in order to make her escape. Because we don't know that the dirty drunk or boy or the dirty people in Pitney. So, blast it out there. Share it for me, please. You're watching Jamaica YouTube TV. So, we get it exactly how we tell it. No fabrication. You got it? So, just like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell and little bless outside saying, And well, well, well. So, JY family, me not even ask you know, if you like and share because by now everybody's supposed to do that already. You don't know the rules. So, JY family, this beautiful little girl that is on your screen, she is 13 years old. She is from Westmoreland. Intense search on for 13 year old from Westmoreland. And Ananda Alert has been activated for 13 year old Alexia Curlo of Simitfield District, Savlama in Westmoreland who has been missing since Friday May 26. She is of brown complexion, slim build and about 160 centimeter which is equivalent to 5 feet 3 inches tall. Reports from the Savlama police are that about 8 p.m. Alexia was last seen on Matthews Lane in Savlama wearing a black romper. She has not been heard from since anyone knowing the whereabouts of alexia is being asked to contact the nearest police station jy family we now pass people pitney a road come on man like up and show up the video for me please john was star you don't know say westmoreland in my place and as me talk about westmoreland you know when we remember scrappy yeah uh, one of the body shoemaker in a green jail scrappy died on the 3rd of april you know, his real name is Devon Watson and his funeral will be held at the New Testament Church of God in Greenville on the 3rd of June. 3rd of June. So, anybody from that side? Yeah, man. Represent, man. I support Scrappy. Trust me. Never look at the shoes. Look. Like, yo, the shoes are need to burn up. You need to dash in a garbage pan or something. No, man. Fret. Fret not thyself. Scrappy is here. Scrappy is going to deal with it. Anyway, JY family, moving on because we have a lot of things to cover 
you know, remember so me have a full time job and sometimes I not even get no time. So guess what? All of the news them pile up on me right now, so me just run them out. So check out this one because this one happened in St. Catherine. One of the gentlemen happened to die on his birthday. My God. Anyway, check out the official report. Three shot, two fatally by gunman at birthday party in Portmore. Three people were shot, two fatally during an attack carried out by gunmen at a birthday party in Waterford, Portmore in St. Catherine on Sunday. The deceased persons have been identified as 40-year-old Jason Ivey of Trelawney West and 67-year-old Nicely Johnson of Deeside Road, both in Waterford, St. Catherine. Reports from the Portmore police are that at about 6.30 p.m., Ivy and Johnson were among invitees at a birthday celebration when two armed men approached them and opened gunfire. Ivy, Johnson, and the other man received multiple gunshot wounds. The police were summoned and all three persons were transported to the hospital where Ivy and Johnson were pronounced dead and the other injured person treated. Mighty God, oh boy, not no su surprise me these days at all, JY family. Yeah man, dirt him for him birth there, and others and then same time some other people injured same way. John was tired, but anyway, he not stop this all because, listen to me, I want to listen to the story, I want to tell me if no God this, tell me if no God this at work. Attack in Seaview, gunman carries out home invasion, weapon jams. A 28-year-old man of a Seaview address has been charged with assault at common law, two counts, and possession of a prohibited weapon stemming from an incident in his community on Friday, March 24. Reports are that about 10.45 a.m., the man identified as Andrian Allen, laborer of the Kingston 11 community forced his way into a house and reportedly pointed a firearm at two complainants and attempted to fire. Reports are that the firearm only reportedly made a clicking sound, Allen then fled from the area. The matter was reported to the police. Allen was pointed out to the police and was subsequently charged on Thursday, May 25th. Jesus, no sir. I, listen to me. A home invasion, this man go for, go pan, you know. In go for don't, don't everybody, you know. But, boy, God was on the mission. When he pulled the chica, nothing, nothing now come out. Merciful Father, why? If you don't believe in a God, or if you don't believe that there is someone mightier than us, trust me, I can't help you. Yeah, man. But this, in this next report, this gentleman was so smart and lucky at the same time. Listen to this report. Man survives by playing dead after being shot by gunmen. A man remains hospitalized after he was shot and his house reportedly set ablaze by unknown gunmen in Goshen, St. Elizabeth on Saturday. The man, according to police sources, pretended to be dead after he was attacked and shot by the gunmen who were traveling in a motor car. No clear motive has yet been established for the attack, this is police investigations are at early stage. Reports are that sometime after 12.30 a.m., residents alerted the police and firefighters to the community after seeing fire coming from the man's one-bedroom house. On their arrival, the wounded man was seen suffering from what appeared to be gunshot wounds outside the burning structure, which was eventually destroyed by the blaze. The injured man was later assisted to hospital. A manhunt has been launched by the St. Elizabeth Police for the hoodlums who were involved. Yo, a quick thinking this, you know? Yo, the man stopping with everything, you know, man, and just play dead, you know? Them thinking dead. Jesus, boy, this, this shouldn't even make news till you know, come to think about it. Jaja, you know, and then go back for him, man. I want to think JY family. Ja, no star. Wow. Mm -mm. Anyway, JY family, see, this is where it get more evil in this report because me can't believe say the brother here decides saying him dirt him father over empty bottle listen to the report here man because i don't want to say me a liar trust me that's why you know kill me busy me try to get the official report if me can't read it you know me not have the time to read it me make the robot read it for me anyway check it out Man convicted of killing his dad over empty bottles. 
A deadly dispute between two close family members over empty bottles three years ago has resulted in a man being convicted of manslaughter in relation to the stabbing death of his father. Dennis Brown Jr. is scheduled to be sentenced on July 7 after a jury unanimously found him guilty of manslaughter relative to the death of his father, Dennis Brown Sr. The verdict was handed down last week at the end of the trial in the Home Circuit Court in downtown Kingston. Reports are that in April 2020, Dennis Brown Sr., a laborer and Tyler, accused his son of stealing some empty bottles that he intended to sell to earn additional income because his job had slowed down due to the social distancing measures that were in place at the time relative to the emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic. An argument later developed between the two at their house on Oddman Lane in St. Andrew, during which Brown SNR was stabbed by his son. The wounded man was taken to hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Brown Jr. was subsequently arrested and charged. <laughs> Jesus. Me say, if you don't believe in the Bible to some extent, well, I can't help you. Because the Bible talk about these things. And in a start the saying, uh, in this final report, we are going to take you back to Tamara Geddes' case. Because, listen to me, I couldn't believe she has so much money, or maybe I never remember. Just come to think of it. One time I see the article, I said, no man. The, the whole family come together, including the dirty sister, and pay over half a million dollars. You have to call it almost a million dollars just to get her sister dirt, just for dirt, her sister. JY family, just listen to the report. Like the video, share the video, and be careful. Trust me, be careful of the people that you say, after your family, them friends, foes, everybody. Woman paid man $230,000 to find gunman to kill her sister, and $500,000. Owen Irving, the man who was paid $230,000 to hire a triggerman to kill Tamara Geddes in retreat, Trelawney almost three years ago on behalf of her sister, has lost his bid to have his 20-year prison sentence for murder quashed for the second time. The convict was adamant that his sentence for murder is manifestly excessive, but the Court of Appeal dismissed the suggestion, affirming the sentence in a recently published judgment. Geddes, 36, was shot dead in her retreat, Falmouth home by a gunman on Friday, June 19, 2020. On March 1, 2021, her sister, Nadine Geddes, was sentenced to 20 years in prison after she pleaded guilty to murder, though she did not actually pull the trigger, but planned the murder of her own sibling with whom she had several disputes with over time. Nadine's daughters, Shanice Ruddick and a then 15-year-old girl, received three-year probationary sentences for misprison of a felony relative to failing to report the murder, despite having knowledge of it. Nadine paid $230,000 to Irving to facilitate the killing of Tamara, the Court of Appeal said after the hearing of a fresh appeal brought by Irving this year. In relation to Irving's conviction for murder and conspiracy to murder, he along with his spouse, Tashana Young, also received $500,000 from Nadine to murder Tenisha Miller, who was the girlfriend of Nadine's deceased brother. Miller had allegedly stabbed Nadine's brother to death. Irving pleaded guilty to Tamara's murder in the Trelawney Circuit Court on March 3, 2021, and was sentenced to 20 years in prison with a stipulation that he should serve 15 years before being eligible for parole consideration. He was sentenced to five years in prison for the conspiracy to murder charge, along with his then-female lover. Dissatisfied with his sentences, Irving went before a single court of appeal judge to have his application for leave to appeal his sentences heard, but it was refused on May 12, 2022. He then brought his application before three appeal court judges in February and March of this year, and through his attorneys, Leonard Green and Alex Parks, argued that the sentences imposed are harsh and manifestly excessive and cannot be justified. But the appellate judges, Justice Marva McDonald Bishop, Justice Jennifer Straw, and Justice David Fraser, said they do not accept that these sentences are manifestly excessive. In elaborating, they said, the circumstances of the offenses are quite disturbing and shocking. In fact, the applicant, Irving, could have been indicted for murder falling within Section 2, 1, of the OAPA, Offenses Against the Persons Act, Circumstances of a Contract Killing, and would have been liable to be sentenced pursuant to Section 3, 1, of the OAPA, 
which provides for a potential penalty of death or life imprisonment with a stipulated statutory minimum term of 20 years. Imprisonment before eligibility for parole, the judges wrote in their decision. In pointing to the disturbing nature of the killing, the judges reminded that in a caution statement, Irving admitted to receiving $230,000 from Nadine, Tamara's sister. The money was paid to a third individual, the triggerman, who had agreed to carry out the killing for the sum of $500,000, the judgment said. It continued, the triggerman who was also arrested, gave a caution statement in which he admitted that the applicant, Irving, piloted him to the location where the deceased, Tamara, was shot and killed. That alleged triggerman, Brian Shelley, is still before the court and is to be tried, but his legal representation remains unsettled. The appeal court judges also took note that Irving and his then spouse received $500,000 from Nadine to murder her deceased brother's girlfriend. The judges determined that the sentencing judge considered and took into account the classical principles of sentencing relative to both the murder and conspiracy to murder counts, including Irving's early guilty plea, aggravating and mitigating factors and the time spent in pre-sentence remand. It was noted, however, that the sentencing judge may not have demonstrated his application of the principles of sentencing in the orderly manner as set out in the case of Misha Clement v. R. and Daniel Ralston v. R., but his attempt at applying the prescribed methodology was evident from a review of the transcript. In the final analysis, the judges were of the view that this court would only interfere with the sentences if they were excessive or inadequate to such an extent as to satisfy this court that when they were passed there was a failure to apply the right principles. Months of coordinated investigations across Trelawney, St. James, Westmoreland and the corporate area led to detectives arresting and charging seven individuals in relation to the murder of Tamara and the conspiracy to murder another woman. One of the accused, Rex and Knott, was freed in February 2021, due to insufficient evidence to mount a viable case against him in court. The Falmouth police reported that on June 19, 2020, at about 8.30 p.m., Tamara was in her room with her daughter when a gunman entered the house, demanded money and then shot the mother several times. The daughter escaped unhurt. The police were alerted and Tamara was taken to a hospital, where she was pronounced dead. On July 14, 2020, Nadine Geddes, along with both of her daughters and Owen Irving, were arrested and charged in connection with Tamara's murder. The other accused persons were subsequently arrested and charged by the investigators. Yeah, man, straight from out of Jamaica life, you know. Why everybody just tune in, you know. And follow, follow the great Jamaica YouTube TV, you know. Straight from out of Portland, you know. Whenever you need a new feed, live and direct, check out YouTube TV. You don't know the thing going you know. on. Me love Jamaica, me now sell out. Them try clip we wings, somehow we can't fly out. But when we there, yeah, nothing nice like Jamaica, roast bread, fruit, and banana. Under the tree with a glass.